So we just wrapped our McGee home refresh and we've shared quite a few videos and tried to do our best to answer questions, but we know you have more. So we've gathered questions from you and I'm going to do my best to answer as many as possible today. Is it harder to design my own home? I'd say yes and no. Yes, because as an interior designer, I see all of the options available and I also see all of the other content and spaces kind of in front of our eyes on a very, like all day, every day. And that can be a bit overwhelming. Um, also, I get in my own head and I will dream about decisions, wake up thinking about them, um, eat lunch thinking about them. And I put a lot of pressure on myself to create beautiful things, not only for, for me, but you know, it is our business. So that can be hard. On the flip side of things, the answer is no, because I can do whatever I want. And I don't have a client to guess um, what their style is. I know my own style. What color is used in my living room? It is Swiss Coffee by Benjamin Moore, a 75% strength. This is not a new color. This is a color that I have in my whole home and have had it since when we moved in. Um, we added a plastered brick to our fireplace and we color matched it to the walls. And then with the addition of the opening and some of the demo, we had to touch up paint. And so we just matched it. I get so many questions about what does 75% strength means. And it basically means you use 75% of the full formula that lightens it just a little bit you can do certain percentages to your liking and test them there was an article that was written that i wasn't interviewed for that says i lighten everything and i think that that's a reason why people think that i do the 75 percent strength to every paint color that is not true i only do it when i find a paint color that is almost there but it just needs to be a touch lighter and instead of going down on the swatch card i just need to adjust the color slightly and so i get a sample made for my local paint store i get asked a lot about the sheen of our paint color as well so on our walls we have um, a matte each brand uses a different terminology for eggshell and i like to use an eggshell or a matte paint typically, but on my trim, I'll use a satin finish. And then um, that carries on to the doors as well. And often the trim work on ceilings. How often should someone repaint their house for a refresh? Now that is a very personal question. I have a client right now and she is amazing. And she repaints her entire house every single year. I mean, the reality is, is like, this is the first home that we built for ourselves. So I've done it once in the span of now almost four and a half years. So um, I don't know, it's, that's a personal question. <laughs> I mean, I, there are other people that will go 20 years <laughs> without a repaint. How to choose what areas to prioritize when the whole house needs to be addressed. I would always start with the common areas that are the most used in your home. And most likely it would be the living or the entryway. Kitchen, sure, but it's a huge undertaking. So make sure that you're ready for it. And often when you start your kitchen, it is connected to your living room. And as soon as you start that kitchen, you'll want to redo your living room. So be prepared to do both at the same time. What thing would I change in our house that I couldn't change? Um, our closet. I love the look of our closet, but from when I moved in to now, um, a big part of my role in our business has um, changed in that I'm in, on camera all the time. Every single day I have to have like a new look. I work with fashion brands and my closet needs have changed. And also when we were building our house, we designed the house and my closet, our closet was bigger and um, we were over on the square footage that we were trying to hit to hit with a, a certain budget. So instead of reworking the entire plan, we shaved back um, the front of the house by a few feet and that was fine in every room that it, it impacted except for it made our closet smaller and I regret that decision. <laughs> and there's a basement room below it. So it has a window well and so I can't push it forward. Any tips for living through a remodel? 
be prepared for it to take longer than you planned and for everything to be so, so dusty. Um, and to also know that the end result is worth it, but you're going to have to just roll with it and kind of be comfortable with there always being like loud noises and people in your house. What finish is my limestone fireplace? It is a tumbled limestone. I don't know the exact type of limestone except for that it was sourced in Texas. How could you get the same look in your home with nine foot ceilings? Well, I actually think that everything just could be scaled down a bit. So um, you could make sure that you have a little bit of a bump out for um, a plastered brick. And then the, our fireplace is really massive because of our tall ceilings, but everything could be um, brought down in scale and it would look really beautiful. Tell us about the sconce in the corner of your living room. So this wasn't something that was planned from the beginning until I realized that the fireplace on our plans needed to be scooted over a little bit to be aligned with our kitchen. I love clean alignment from a fireplace to a kitchen range when those two rooms are stacked. In order to do that in my living room, the fireplace couldn't be centered on the wall. It had to be shifted a little bit. And so we ended up with a gap to the right side of our built-in. That was the perfect opportunity to create a really beautiful vignette. And when I'm creating these little vignettes in a home, art lights are a great way to um, really just take it to the next level. Um, and so I did this, I found this light that has an arm that reaches over and I thought, wouldn't that be so cool above a vase on a pedestal? And so I installed that, I did um, the pedestal with this vase um, and this was in our first living room look and I kept it there. I just swapped the art and the vase um, behind it. The key to choosing two sofas that work together but are different. So this is something I talk about in my book. Um, so shout out to The Art of Home. But I'll dive into that a little bit. I think there's a few things that I look for. One is I look at the bottom of the sofa. I look at the legs and I want one that comes close to the floor or touches the floor. Maybe it has a base like this chair or as a slip cover. And then the other one, I will choose to um, have legs. So one that's like more substantial and base heavy, and then the other one feels a little lighter. The other thing you want to consider is just kind of that the arm height reaches somewhat the same level. Um, there are exceptions to that rule, but if you're looking for an easy win, those are some things to look for. I also am looking at um, some continuity between the two styles. So maybe they both have um, a subtle slope to um, the back or the arm. Uh, just any points of continuity would be um, a great place to bring connection, but then also differentiate by looking at the bases. Tell us about the plastered brick fireplace. It's hard to see. Okay, well, that's too bad because it is one of my favorite things that we did to our living room. Um, we applied the brick and then did an overgrout, which means that when they're um, doing the grout, they kind of smear it all over instead of making the grout so that you can see each individual brick in like clean lines. And then from there, once that dried, uh, the plaster is applied. So it's the same type of plaster that would be used on a wall or a range hood. Um, they apply that to the brick and then they give a really heavy coverage. I actually wanted to lose the shape of each individual brick. I wanted to see texture, but I wasn't wanting um, like an industrial loft kind of feel or even a farmhouse feel. I just wanted a really beautiful texture and maybe we'll show you in an iPhone shot so that you can see it better. Why didn't I use a sectional? Because I don't want a sectional in my main living room. I think sectionals are fun couches. I don't put them in the rooms that are um, supposed to act as like the pretty living room and we have a basement and so the sectional is down there. If you have one living room, you don't have a formal living room and a more family room, and you think that a sectional is the way to go, I think you're choosing function over form. And that's not a bad thing. It's just, does it work for you? And for me, I find two sofas to be um, really comfortable as well. And clearly, I love both form and function. Do I pick a rug or a sofa first? It depends on the room. 
and it depends on the project. However, I would say that I tend to start with a piece of upholstery first because I'm looking to meet the needs of the family, and then the next piece I select is usually a rug. Hardwood floors versus engineered hardwood floors. Well, I mean, hardwood floors all day, but that requires, um, well, it doesn't necessarily require more budget, but I love true hardwood floors. That said, I use a lot of engineered floors in our projects as well. Where are the black cabinets from in the living room? These are not off the rack cabinets that I bought and installed in our living room. Um, we built them into the home. I designed them, we drew them, and uh, I wanted them to be steel. And then we had the steel fabricator for the home do the doors, and then the millwork um, team did the um, vertical tongue and groove and shelves in the back. Stairs with carpet or wood, what would you recommend? Uh, both together. I love a wood stair with a carpet runner. What calculation do I use to decide the TV above my fireplace? It's really complicated. I put blue painter's tape on the wall. <laughs> my, the design team draws an elevation. So, you know, there, that's more technical. We actually just put the dimensions on the drawing and we look to see if it looks good or not. <laughs> um, and if you don't have um, AutoCAD skills, you can just tape it on your wall to see if it fills in the space. I think that for me, when you have a fireplace below, I like to make sure that the ends of the TV are coming in a few inches. I wouldn't try to go end to end on the fireplace because that's going to start to feel too large. Kitchen, island, wood, and stained. It's a white oak with a custom mix stain that is a really dark brown. Kitchen, hardware, and lights. So the lights are our scarlet pendant from McGee & Co. and they're a really beautiful olive leather. Um, and then the hardware is from Armick Martin. So I always recommend different chairs at the end of my dining table. No, not necessarily. I think it just depends on the style of your home and also it depends on your dining spaces. So if you have a kitchen nook and a dining room, I would just differentiate them. And so you can do one with different head chairs and then another with the same chair all the way around. Do I have can lights between my stove and my island? Okay, so I'm gonna tell you a secret. Interior designers Photoshop out the recess lighting in almost all of their photos. So um, yes, I have recessed lighting. I try to keep it fairly minimal. I don't want to go overboard, but yes, I do. How did I choose and hang the plates in my dining room? I am an avid vintage shopper and Etsy shopper. I do really deep dives and I found these beautiful plates. I ordered them and then I just kind of held them up and then found these like gold plate hangers on Amazon. Do I see myself switching them out a lot? Um, I already swapped them out for Christmas. I did red vintage plates. And yeah, I mean, I we are taking the kids to London and Paris in a week or two. And I plan to go to the flea market. And if I find new plates, new old plates, I'm sure that I'll switch them out. What is the size of the jute rug in my dining room? It's a 9 by 12. Can you see Margot's room? Yes, you can. So her room, I didn't do an overhaul or anything to her room until like two weeks ago, she started climbing out of her crib. And so um, I found an antique sleigh bed with the little rails on the side and I swapped that out. Uh, so I'll have to go in there and show it to you, but everything else, virtually everything else from the original reveal is the same. Why didn't I add wallpaper to Ivy's room initially? Well, I had wallpaper in her bathroom and I had wallpaper in Ren's room and I was trying to differentiate them. But then when I moved in, I was like, kind of feels like it's missing something. And I was trying not to go overboard with the wallpaper, but clearly I love wallpaper. And so I should just lean into that. What's the key to sconce placement? I do what just feels right. Um, again, I tape everything out. We draw everything in CAD. Um, but it, like when it comes time to install, I have the electrician hold it up and I'll hold the artwork below. I would say that um, I would, you know, come a few inches within them touching, but I, you just got to go with your gut. Can you see the closet refresh? If I can get Sid to pick his clothes up off the floor, then we can do the closet refresh. Also, I need to get a new shade in there because now I have an oval window and um, we just hung up the old one because our neighbors could see into our closet. But um, yeah, eventually we'll get there. What's my next home project? Well, my next home project is actually happening right as we speak. Uh, I am, I have 
an extra space. It was a closet storage space in my studio above the garage. And I realized that this was the perfect opportunity to showcase our new Ansax tile and our Kohler collection. And so I'm turning that little closet space into a bathroom and I am really excited about it. This is fun. I've been recently trying to dive into DMs and answer questions and share them with you all um, on Instagram. And this way we can do it in video format and it's a lot more polished than when I do it. And so um, we'll try to do this with more projects.